Jesus Christ, the most innocent man who ever lived, is put on trial as if he were the most guilty. Jesus Christ, who is the perfection of human goodness, is accused by some of being evil. Jesus is mocked for his claims to be who he really is, the divine Son of God. Indeed, Jesus is regarded as mistaken, if not delusional, in thinking that he could be anything more than human. Jesus, who is the true word of God, is sought by many to be an outright liar and a fraud. The miraculous deeds that attest to his person and his power are completely ignored or denied by some. Why? Why, we should ask. Because Jesus simply makes too many people quite uncomfortable. Indeed, if Jesus is actually who he claims to be, then that has to put demands on people to change their minds and hearts, if not to abandon their present manner of life completely in order to follow him. That would certainly limit their freedom to continue doing whatever they want to do and obligate them to a high standard of morality revealed by Jesus in his great commandment. And so Jesus must be silenced if the godless are to go about their plans with impunity. Indeed, he must be eliminated if people are to be free to continue their immoral ways without suffering any qualms of conscience or any consequence whatsoever. Thus, many of those who initially praise Jesus end up jeering him instead. Some who have been greatly helped by him then attribute their healing to some other cause. Indeed, all the powers of darkness converge and cooperate to try to extinguish the light of all lights for the world, Jesus the Christ. And if we think about it, that is actually what's happening right now in the world around us, not only in the last the first third of the, of the first century in Jerusalem during Passover. For make no mistake about it, the trial of Jesus Christ is actually ongoing. It's actually perpetuated in every time and place by all who have to make a decision about Jesus, who he really is and by the naysayers who try to deny, demote, or even delete him as as irrelevant to their lives, if not dangerous. And this will continue until the day Jesus returns as promised in glory and then is revealed beyond any possible doubt to be who he says he is. God's only Son sent to us to be our way, our truth, and our life. Thus, on that final day, all his detractors, of which there will have been no shortage in any day or age, will be exposed as the liars, the frauds, the evildoers, that they try to accuse him and even his followers throughout the centuries of also being. So whenever Jesus is put on trial, and in truth he always is, then so are we, because there is no safe middle ground in regard to Jesus. We are either on his side or we are not. We are either his defenders or we are his detractors. We are either among those who prefer to write Jesus off as dead and gone, or we are those who truly believe he is risen and lives. So on that final day, 
When Christ appears as the just and final judge, there will be no need for any lengthy proceedings to determine anyone's ultimate guilt or innocence in regard to him. For each and every person who has ever lived will have already been tried and fairly convicted in regard to Christ, revealed as an authentic believer or not. The former, the believers, as promised, will be the sheep invited to endless life in his kingdom. The eternal fate of those who in the end reveal themselves to be goats will be in his hands. Will he justly condemn them, or will he mercifully save them? That is not a question for us to answer, because we cannot know. What we do know is that until a person's final thought and last breath, their eternal fate is in no small way right in their own hands. So for us, as the week before us unfolds now, whether it will be truly holy or not depends on us. Will our devoted participation prove us to be among the faithful disciples? Or will our indifference to it, or our preference to engage in otherworldly distractions rather than fruitful worship, expose us as Catholics who are at best lukewarm or less. Yes, the ones that Jesus said he'd prefer to spit out of his mouth. Indeed, while there is much of which we cannot really be certain in regards to this world and the world to come, But let us be sure of this. The evidence continues to be gathered on us as this trial called life proceeds towards its ultimate conclusion, which will be for each of us an inevitable face-to-face encounter with Jesus Christ. Whether we can long for that day with serenity and peace, or must dread it in fear, is in the end only up to us.